Hello and welcome to this tutorial on LibreOffice presented to you by FreeMac Software and macOS 10 screencasts. With version 4 of LibreOffice, the free and open source app that used to be OpenOffice sets itself now apart from OpenOffice with some really interesting features, the most important ones in a nutshell. It is now possible to comment on text ranges in a document, perfect for collaboration. Speaking of collaboration, LibreOffice now supports CMIS, which stands for Content Management Interoperability Services, which is an open standard for document exchanging documents and collaboration. LibreOffice can now open Visio and Publisher documents. And there's now also a remote app for Android, which lets a user control slideshows. Hopefully, we'll see an iPhone version soon too. In the next couple of minutes, we're going to show you how to use some of the new features plus some more features that are also new. Enjoy the screencast! Here we have a document that I just received from a student. It's her first draft and I want to tell her that she needs to make some adjustments. Using comments, this should be relatively straightforward for her. To add a comment, first configure your user in the preferences. When this is set, all comments made will show up with your name. I'm going to use two different names in this demonstration. Adding a new comment is easy. Just select some text or place your cursor and then select Comment from the Insert menu. Note there is also a shortcut available. I'm also going to turn on Recording of Changes. You can do that from the Edit menu. Here you can select to record changes. And now I make some edits. Note that I also have changed my username. We're now playing the role of the student who has just received this document. We can have a conversation and discuss certain changes. Just click reply on the comment bubble. There are also other options for deleting a comment as well. Because we've recorded changes in the previous step, we can now view the changes, accept or reject them. There are a lot of options here. Accept comments individually, or accept all of them, or reject all of them at once. The filter is where you can set even more advanced options. This is good if you have a large document that was just proofread. You can filter this list by author to make sure to only look at changes provided by one specific proofreader. Also improved is how LibreOffice works with images. The RTF now supports drawing object syntax, but I can't show you this because I lack a document to show. Libre logo is pretty amazing. It's based on logo and is a language for vector art. To use Libre logo, first make its toolbar visible from the view menu. You can find some examples for logo on the LibreOffice website. I can't go into detail with this. Logo is basically a programming language and you can use it now in a slightly different form to draw images that can be scaled to any size, which means they are always going to look amazing on a retina and higher resolution display. Calc has some new features too. I like especially that charts now act a bit more intelligently in terms of displaying data. Let me first create a sample chart. Now we just highlight the chart and make it a bit smaller. In the first step, you now see that the data points now overlap. And in the second step, the values on the axis rotate to make room for readability. Generally, Calc is now also quicker in some cases, especially when loading bigger Excel spreadsheets. Obviously, I can't show you that, but Calc is now also more compatible with Excel files. Some people will also be happy to hear that LibreOffice can now export single charts as graphics on their own. Just right-click on a chart and select Export as Graphic. This way it becomes very easy to use these charts in other documents. I recall myself writing my thesis where I used OpenOffice only for some charts. All the cropping took a lot of time. Now it's just built in. New is also a pivot table. This was previously known as the data pilot. Let me quickly create a pivot table from our small example table here. First, select some data, then go to data, pivot table, 
to create a new one. Now obviously this is not a very good example here, but using the pivot table you can set up really complex filters for a very big analysis of data. There is also a long section in the documentation dedicated only to pivot tables. You can go there if you want to learn more. Unfortunately, we can cover everything in our short amount of time. There are a ton more features which you can find at the new features page linked in the show notes. But there's also one feature that got my attention. It's the new integration with existing CMIS systems. With this, LibreOffice is not just an open source word editor anymore, it now becomes a real business tool. It had the potential before, but it wasn't well integrated with, well, document management systems. I'm not going to make this about a business use case, but you can use the CMIS integration for that as well. Instead, I figured that you want to see how you can connect to your Google Drive documents using this feature. Now, first of all, there's no direct connection possible because Drive doesn't support CMIS yet. But there are third parties who bridge the gap for us. One of which that is currently free is Cloudoku. Before you can use LibreOffice with your Google Drive, you first have to register at their website and then at least once have to authorize Cloudoku to access your documents. You can try out their service in their so-called CMIS browser. The next thing we need is this URL here. Go to the CMS browser and paste it right in here. We're now taken to the Google page where we can authorize Cloudoku. And when everything is set up correctly, you should see this page. Now the next thing we need to do is do the same thing again, just to confirm everything is working correctly. Now we can set up LibreOffice to work with Cloudoku. Open the preferences and under general choose to use LibreOffice dialogs. This replaces the open and save dialogs with LibreOffice ones. Now click OK to confirm and click open. The dialog now appears a bit different. Go to this button here. The first thing that we need to do is set the type and give it a name. We can ignore the server type. This is basically just filling out the binding URL for us. Again, we need to paste the Cloudoku address in here, and then we click the hooked arrow to provide our password and username. Once done, click OK. And when everything is set up correctly, you should now see the repository that we are going to use is the Cloudoku one. Now just click OK and open your Google Drive from the sidebar. We're now connected to Google Drive. Let's edit some text now that we have the document open. I'm just gonna remove the last two paragraphs here. The first thing you're going to notice is that LibreOffice is now considerably slower. I assume this is going to get better in the future, but right now the integration, probably because it's beta, is not the fastest. Once done, hit save to upload the changes. And you're gonna see the changes show up in Google Drive immediately. But when I make changes, in Google Drive, they are now saved. They are not automatically showing up in LibreOffice. You would have to reopen the document to make changes appear. So using CMS and LibreOffice with your Google Drive is not perfect yet, but it's usable. If you prefer desktop apps to web apps, this is a really great feature you might want to check out because you get to use all the new stuff LibreOffice 4 has to offer. If you want to take a look at a different CMS service, take a look at Alfresco. They built a document storage system on their own and it integrates CMS. It's free for personal use and not free for enterprises and for people who want a little more than their free tier. Alfresco's server app is also available for free. I couldn't figure out how to set up LibreOffice to use Alfresco though. Right now there is no documentation available and all instructions I've found are for Alfresco users using it on their own servers. So you may have to do a little digging on your own. Thanks for watching the screencast. Until next time, take care.